we had from the APP, the strategic plan, and the budget. Therefore, there had to be necessary revisions of all those presentations that were done by the department. Subsequent to us having met with the department, as the law dictates, we then have to proceed to engage with the entity, which is the South African Tourism, for them to indicate to us areas that have been adjusted upwards, downwards, in as far as the budget is concerned, as I said, based on the corona inevitabilities. So we are now going to give over to you, Minister, the Deputy Minister, the team from the South African uh, Tourism to do the presentation. Please, we have already received the presentation in the past. What we need to be focusing on today, it is areas where amendments have been made with regard to us is on as an entity in a responding to the imperative so we are now going to consequence to you, Minister, of the need to revise the Minister, based on the coronavirus. The team, because you have already done so in the past, and, uh, I don't expect you to take us to do through the presentation. all the Please. other details that we have done. We have already past. received I'm not saying we must cut corners, based on the corona. but I'm just saying what we need, it will be worth for us to focus on the it task of areas the where so over to you, Minister, have been to introduce your team, the and then the team does the presentation. After the presentation is engaged by the committee, after the committee has engaged to revise its way forward, and after we go into the minutes, because we have done the minutes, over to you, Minister. Thank you very much, Chair. Good afternoon, Chairperson, Honorable Members, members of the South African. Tourism Board um, executive group from the department and the entity. Yeah, in this chair, um, we are meeting again. We uh, came last week to present the APP of um, the budget advice budget for the department. We did indicate that this week would be with you on uh, quite a number of issues, but um, we needed to clarify that today and I think uh, to have several members of the board together with the XCO and the DGs also on the line together with um, officials. I'm not going to introduce them to body, but safe to say with us, maybe let me first confirm to the portfolio committee as committed last time that um, we were in the process of finalizing the appointment of the board and uh, board chairperson and deputy. Um, Honor to announce that we have appointed Mr. Sia Dube as the chairperson of the board and advocate Mujam Ugumbi as um, deputy chairperson of the board. Uh, with me on here, members of the board who are here, it's also Ms. Lindy Wesangwenisido, whom you are quite familiar with, uh, Mr. Enver Dumini, who also you are familiar with, Zola Chefu, who's been with the board. Ms. Gloria Serobe, I think, would be here with us for the second time as the board and Mr. Mtuduzi Zakwe will be the first time joining the board as one of the new members in the board chair. Um, I must reiterate, Chair, that today we are presenting the revised uh, budget. Um, the APP has already been adopted um, in terms of the work, but also do highlight that we are meeting today after the president on Sunday made announcement in terms of um, how we are proceeding as uh, the country in terms of dealing with the pandemic. Um, and you know, Chair, as we said as government, that we have adopted a risk-adjusted strategy. Risk-adjusted means that as in when you assess the risk, you can either go up or you go down. Uh, that's what it means. You risk adjust, you assess the risk and you adjust accordingly. That's what it means. Um, this unfortunately bears or puts more consequences for us in the tourism sector. So as the risk as adjusted or risk assessment was done, and that led to the announcement on Sunday, it does have quite a lot of consequences for us in the tourism sector. The restrictions of movement, 
um, continues and with the imposing of curfew means that some of the activities in terms of its impact of functioning would be affected. Um, the withdrawal of sale or the suspension of the sale of alcohol will have impact as well. And you would note, Chair, that there was some level of confusion, though uh, one had clarified that the decision from NCCC was that um, leisure accommodation was not allowed. But in terms of interpretation, quite a number of people thought that what was written in the regulation gave such permission. And that was clarified by Minister Lamini Zuma together with Minister Lamola and Minister Patel when they did their media briefing yesterday in terms of what has always been the decision of NCCC. Um, and also, Chair, quite frankly from our side, as I said even previously, is that we as the portfolio will continue to be advocates for the tourism sector, would go into this meeting to put the preference to put the case for tourism. It's based on the advices, as you note, that as the country, the country adopted a strategy that when we deal with this, we'll continuously base our decisions on the advice from the health advisory team. As in when they see the risk going up, or going down, they will advise in terms of the approach for government. So that has happened and continuously we are led in that context. We would wish from the portfolio to have quite a lot of things coming to life, would wish to see people moving. But as we said, it's a delicate balancing between lives and livelihoods. And as I say now, Chair, one of the things we have adopted from our side, which we have agreed with the DG, and also one of the things that we had we're starting to look at is to say, let's go back to the drawing board again, because we thought we'd be making progress at this point. Unfortunately, the pandemic numbers are going higher. We are about to reach 300,000 in terms of the country. We're likely to be in the top five of the people in terms of the countries globally of the pandemic. That says a lot. Now, we start assessing ourselves across the globe with those countries in those categories and see how they are handling what are the measures that they are doing also from tourism point of view. And we'll continue to assess that because we did have, in terms of our strategy, the scenarios that we looked at, worst case scenario, medium case, and also moderate. We know now that our handling or our numbers are not what initially we would term as a mild uh, environment. So that scenario falls off. Now, the moderate as well is falling off. So we're sitting with a almost a case of worst case scenario of the pandemic numbers going higher. The health practitioners or the medical teams are saying to us, we are about to reach a point where the health or the what is it called, the beds are running out. And when we do that, then it has more impact on us in terms of economic activities. We have to drill down in terms of the numbers that we are seeing, see with the revised modeling of the health practitioners, the epidemiologists, to say what does it give us. But we remain hopeful, Chair, and we believe that it is important for the country to contain the virus. It is important for the country to contain the pandemic because once it contained, and then it will give confidence even to global tourists to be not only relying on domestic tourism. So we are confident that Minister Mkize with the team of health practitioners, all those men and women who are in the front line, if we work together, especially with us as South Africans, as President has said that we need to be responsible, we will be able to assist the country to manage the pandemic and sectors like ourselves will be able to find a way of coming back and reviving. And that's what we need to work together. I don't think at this point, uh, it's a point where we should be pointing fingers as a country, as a sector. It's a time where we need to hold hands, work together and find solutions. Lasting solutions, but not that puts lives at risk, that puts livelihood at risk. Let's find that delicate balance of balancing between lives and livelihood. I'm saying this because, Chair, that it is an appeal I'm making as the Minister of Tourism. People are hurt, yes, we understand. Livelihoods are affected, businesses are going through difficult times, but we are also saying, while we understand that difficulty, 
we have to account if we are to have more lives being lost because we will be asked as the leadership of this country, what have we done? So as the minister, I do have the responsibility both in terms of being an individual accounting, but collectively together with the cabinet, we do not disown any of the decisions. We collectively take responsibility as a collective in cabinet. So when those decisions are taken, sometimes I do get a sense from the sector as, as expecting me as the Minister of Tourism to stand and disown decisions of cabinet and say this is not in the best interest of tourism. I can never do that. I'm a member of cabinet and those decisions binds me. I'm part of them. I was part of the engagements. Whether whatever I've put has been defeated, it's immaterial. Whether whatever I've put has been adopted is immaterial. What emerges out of that process? It's a collective decision that is being advocated. So I do want to appeal to members of the sector to say, please don't expect me as Minister of Tourism to speak against my cabinet, as Minister of Tourism to speak against this government, because it's not going to happen. It will be ill-disciplined, but I will be violating my oath of office. So I thought it's important, Chair, for me to say this, because there's been quite a lot of comments in the public domain that almost suggest that they want me to stand up and speak against the government, which is not going to happen. So as a platform where I account, I need to raise this, and I hope, Chair, I will have the support of the committee in terms of my work. Thank you very much. And then okay. with that, Chair, um, I do have, I want to hand over through you uh, to, I've got DM with us, um, if he would want to say some few words and then over to the board to take over. From there, the board will guide with the SAT presentation. No, no, thanks very much, Chair, and good good, good afternoon to members. No, I'm, I'm covered with the Minister of I don't have any much to say. Thanks very much. Honorable Chair, honorable members of the Portfolio Committee on Tourism, good afternoon. Good afternoon to the Minister and as well as the Deputy Minister. Afternoon to the officials of the department. Uh, the Minister has already uh, in her opening remarks indicated that Portfolio Board members, some are new. Uh, and she introduced them all by name. I'm not going to go over that again in the interest of saving time. Uh, and we are here to present uh, the, the supplementary budget adjustment as it affects South African tourism. And in the main, the number that we are looking at is 886 million rand, uh, as was announced by the uh, Minister of Finance. Yes, we are as, as 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 guided by the chairperson of the portfolio committee. We are going to zoom straight into the budget implications, the affected programs, and how they are affected, and also touch on the work that with the revised budget we are still embarked on. And in that regard, uh, the CEO and his team is going to lead us through the. Uh, presentation, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Honourable Members. Good afternoon, Minister and Deputy Minister. Uh, thank you once again for giving us opportunity to present uh, our budget. Today, I'm accompanied by the entire executive team of uh, South African Tourism, who are open uh, to be able to answer questions at the end of the session. Um, as the chair had said, we will not delve into the detail on the APP side and uh, really kind of get to the essence of what we are trying to deliver to you today because you already have received uh, the presentation up front. So we'll be presenting today is I will spend some time just to give some context and then I will hand over to our very capable uh, chief financial officer, Nombolelo Guliwe, who then will take us through the numbers and I think uh, then we'll take a pause from there. Um, Mule, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. I think in this slide here, we're just providing the context of where we find ourselves, you know, in terms of the COVID environment, uh, us having to revise our budgets and make sure that we are aligned, basically, for, you know, in the environment that we're in. Our key focus here has been working on a recovery plan together 
with the sector to make sure that we can start to get on top of elements of the sector itself and prepare ourselves for the eventuality, either with the COVID environment or post-COVID environment. And I think as the minister had said, there are various, various scenarios in place that we will put through uh, from that perspective. So that's the back of what our APP, as you recall, was uh, based on. Next slide. Thank you. And then in this slide here, yeah, it just really gives you a sense of uh, the alignment to the recovery plan and budget. Um, the programs that we have are five of them. Corporate support, business enablement, leisure tourism marketing, business events, and tourism experience. And in there as well, that's the encapsulation of the, uh, of the budget programs that, that uh, are, need to be funded. The key focus areas then become around reviewing our market investment choices, because as we had said when you presented the APP, that the environment around us is changing. So therefore, we also have to realign ourselves. These are the things that are keeping us busy during this period, looking at reigniting demand at the right time, at the appropriate time when the market starts to turn. We really got to climb quite aggressively and make sure that our voices are heard, both domestically and also outside of our borders to make sure we can get our numbers right. At the same time as well, is also looking at the rejuvenating of the supply side, you know, making sure that during this, uh, you know, environment that we're in, we are able to bring in new players who also represent and augment rather uh, the different activities across the country. Then the other focus becomes the business enabling capability. This is the whole drive, um, honorable members, around uh, technology, you know, uh, digitization of a lot of the things that we do right across the board, both inward facing and also external facing uh, for SA tourism as well. And then lastly, this needs to be embedded then in, uh, in internal controls around corporate governance and make sure that, uh, you know, we can also keep the people that we need in order to ensure that we can take SA tourism in South Africa back to where it was before as well. Next slide. I think then in, 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 in summary, what encapsulates our, 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 our budget is that um, in light of the constrained fiscal space and limitations on marketing, SA Tourism has reduced budgeted spend significantly, focusing on foundational and transformative initiatives that will position the organization to best support the recovery. The APP follows a, a reduced budget, the best use of resources, and an organization that will be prepared to move quickly once travel potentially uh, returns. The key emphasis that we want to make here is that SA Tourism through the Department of Tourism will continue to monitor the environment with National Treasury upon readiness of the sector based on the risk adjusted approach. The department shall motivate to the National Treasury to consider resourcing tourism's recovery efforts from a marketing and developmental point of view as well. So as well around this, SA Tourism will continue to strengthen industry collaboration with all the partners to make sure that we all are reading from the same hymn sheet. And I think this slide then just kind of encapsulates where we are at reduced budget, but also being appropriate for the time we're in, but opening the door when things do change, we are able to, to resume our natural position and get tourism back to where it was. Um, with that, I'm going to hand over to the CFO who will then take us through the various programs and the essential details uh, around them. So over to you, Nambula. Let's just share the screen once okay. more. Chairperson and honourable members, good afternoon. Um, I'll take, I'll take you through the revenue side um, as it's linked to a revised APP at a consolidated level, but I'll also drill down to program level as I go through the presentation. Um, on a revenue management side, our revenue line items were reviewed and adjusted in light of the revised fiscal framework. Total revenue projections of 1.5 billion before the revision were revised by 
were revised down to 438 million rent, which amounts to 29% of the total initial um, revenue projection. The adjustment in total revenue uh, projection was mainly due to the downward revision in the transfer from the Department of Tourism, which is an amount of just over 866 million rent. Um, there was also a revision in our other revenue streams, um, downward revision in um, projected revenue from uh, Thompson levies, um, downward revision in projected income from our grading fees, as well as downward revision in projected income from exhibition income. And that was all, that was all linked to, to the closure of the tourism sector. And hence, um, the total revenue projection now that links back to our, to our APP of 438 million rent. Um, this would be the, the revenue, revenue side of things, which is the credit side. On the debit side, which talks to the investment or, or the expenditure management, we have um, at a program level um, various adjustments. And I'll drill down into it as I go through the program level revisions. So um, the CEO touched on the impact of the constrained fiscal space, as well as the limitations it's had on our marketing activities. Um, so as a result of the adjustment in the revenue side, the revenue, um, the revenue side, so the credit side, there was a corresponding adjustment on the investment side. So um, and this um, budget reflects this. Um, so on, on a program level, program one, which talks to corporate support, was reduced by or adjusted downwards by 21% to just over 111 million. Our second program, which is business enablement, was reduced by 64% um, to a final number of 33.8 million rent. Our third program, which is leisure tourism market marketing, was reduced by 80%. Um, to just over 226 million rand. Um, the fourth program, which is uh, business events, was adjusted by 83% um, to just over 23 million rand. And our final program, which is program five, visitor experience, was adjusted by 39% to a total um, budget projection of 44 million rand. And this slide shows how we had planned to, to invest at a different program level the funds of that we have available, which is a total of 438 million rent. Um, the table at the bottom is, is shows the expenditure oh, management. Oh, 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 sorry, sir. Oh. Can you hear me, my sister? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry to disrupt you. The figures you have been reading on special adjustment appropriation are not exactly the same as the ones on the screen. Just, just look at them again. Okay. I'm, I'm reading the percentages. So the percentages, uh, Chair, are not on the screen, but the total um, revised amounts are on the screen. So for corporate yeah, support, I, it's I, the last column. Yeah, the last column is correct. The yes. second column of percentages is the one which is dissimilar to the one you are reading out. But it's okay. I don't think oh, it's a okay. big print smash. I just wanted members to be aware that uh, you might be having something slightly different from what we are having on the on the screen. Okay, noted, Chair. Yeah. I no think problem. the just to, just to address the the difference. So what I'm talking to is the percentage reduction, but the absolute numbers that are sitting in the special adjustment appropriation column actually ties back to the to the percentage. So that 1.1 billion rent would tie back to the percentages yeah. that I'm reading or I'm talking yeah. to. Excellent. Proceed. Thank you, Chair, for that. Okay. And then on an economic classification um, uh, level, we've split out our expenditure at a compensation uh, level line item, goods and services as well as, well as capital expenditure. Um, there's a consolidated downward revision in the employee cost line item of just over 5 million rand, and, and that's due to a decision to, to freeze current vacancies. And then on a goods and services level, the 1.1 billion rand adjustment that you see on the slide is, is mainly due to a limitation in outward, mark, um, outward marketing facing activities. 
and it's linked to program three and program four um, of our APP. And then on a capital expenditure line um, item, this is a consolidated view of SA tourism, but the downward revision was mainly due to uh, um, us going back and identifying those assets that didn't need um, immediate replacement and rather choosing to, to extend their useful life rather than a, a, a new procurement. And that led to an, a, a special adjustment of 1.6 um, million rand. Um, and then the total investment is 438 million rand, which reconciles back to the revenue slide, slide number eight. So on, uh, I had said I'll, I'll drill down to program level just to give an explanation of um, the special adjustments. So when I presented as correctly, um, as, as Chair, you've noted, I, I spoke about percentages, but the percentage is actually reconciled to the special adjustment appropriation column. So the 21% adjustment in corporate support is in absolute number, the 29 million rent that we're seeing there's an adjustment. Uh, so on, on, on a corporate level, so on a corporate level, um, where am I? Oh, corporate support. So this, this program is responsible for uh, sound uh, corporate governance. So it's linked to that strategic um, objective. It's mainly made up of support services in the organization and is responsible for ensuring compliance uh, uh, with statutory requirements. So it had a 29 million rand adjustment or in, in, in percentage terms, it had a 21% adjustment. And that was mainly due to a reduction in or a downward revision in, in employee costs. Um, and and, and it, cross, it, it cuts across, I had said or in the consolidated slide that that was due to the vacancy fees. And then at goods and services level, there was also an adjustment of 27 million rand. And that's mainly due to um, a revision or a downward revision in, in operational costs. For example, from an audit fee, um, perspective. So audit fees are included in the 27 million adjustment. Our external auditors couldn't uh, perform uh, international country offices, um, country office audits due to the uh, closure of the borders and that audit is taking place remotely. So there is therefore an adjustment or a saving in that line item and it's included in the 27 million rand adjustment. We also went through a, a review of all our ICT costs where we identified costs that could be delayed and hence the 27 and those costs contributed to the 27 million rand adjustment and then payments for for capital assets um, at a program level there's a 1.6 million rand um, adjustment from original APP and that's mainly um, due to delaying um, capital expenditure and extending where we can the life the extension life or the life the useful life of current assets that we have in the the entity. This slide chair shows at a activity level what or, or the line items that we got the 29.4 million rent adjustment from. I've already touched on um, what contributed to the total adjustment. So it was the operational cost at 27 million rent, compensation of employees um, at 732,000 rent, as well as um, the extension of useful life of assets, which contributed to the 1.6 million rand. Our second um, program is uh, business enablement. So this program ensures strate strategy development, uh, provides a centralized um, research and insights, uh, uh, whilst also ensuring that we link back to the strategic objective of reigniting uh, demand, rejuvenating supply, as well as building a, a capable entity. Um, there was a, a special adjustment which contributed to uh, the, to the consolidated adjusted amount of just over 60 million rand, and it's mainly made up of a downward revision in the line item compensation of employees of 2 million rand, as well as goods and services of 50 8.8 .8 million rent. And that's mainly due to a suspension of um, key project in response to the um, current um, closure in of the tourism sector. 
So some of the key projects that were initially included as part of the 79 million rent that were then revised downwards include um, the work done in the domestic survey space as well as brand tracking work that we also do and that's also done by our uh, strategy team. The next slide would then deal with the detail per activity. So it's a reconciliation of, of the previous slides and it shows where um, why, which different line items were adjusted to get to the total revision of 60.9 million at a, at a program level. Yeah, I will then move to program three. Um, program three is the leisure marketing uh, program. Um, this program provides for destination marketing, targeting leisure tourists, both at international and domestic level. And it aligns to the strategic objective of reigniting demand. So similar to the other programs, Chair, you'll see that the compensation line item was um, also revised downwards for this program. Um, there was a material um, downward revision for the projection of goods and services budget. And that was mainly due to, I think I've, I've said this before, it's mainly due to the reduced external facing marketing activities. Um, there was suspension of, 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 train, train, of, of trade training um, sessions as well as trade engagements. Um, we, there was also a decision to suspend hostings while the, while the borders are closed, as well as to significantly reduce traditional media and uh, media marketing activities or marketing investment. And then on a payment of capital assets that, that's linked to, to our capital expenditure and that line item was not um, adjusted. So our fourth, okay. And then this slide deals, it's, it's, it's a reconciliation of the previous slide. It just shows at a activity level, which line items contributed to the adjustment of just over 885 million rent with the biggest one being media placement and followed by the reduction in external facing marketing activities. Then our fourth program is business events. This program is responsible to market business events um, and aligns to the strategic objective of also re reigniting demand. So it's similar to, to, the, to program three. Uh, which is leisure tourism marketing. Um, it's similar trend to, to previous um, programs as well as a consolidated view. The compensation of employee um, line item was revised downward uh, by just over 1.1 million rent. Um, and then at a goods and services level, there was also a, a revision in, in, in the total projected amount at the time of 121.6 million. It was revised down to 5.2 million rent. And the reason for the downward revision was due to the reduction in bidding activities due to Hello. Chair, we've lost the, chair, we've lost the sound. Yeah, we have lost the sound. Chairman, are you there? Or CEO? Yes, I'm here, Chair. Um, I think uh, you the can, maybe... You can, you can wrap it up. Continue, okay. I just don't have control of the slides, though. We are on slide 10. Yes, I'm saying the CFO is controlling the screen. Business event. No, you can just tell whoever is controlling to say next slide. I think it's in the Tema Semola. No, no, it was not me, but uh, Chairperson, but I will try to also share it. Yeah, we are on slide number 10, program four. Okay. So what you can do from your side is to try and go to the next slide. If you are able to do so, slide number 11.
No, it was slight. Um, Proceed. Four. Four. Yes, slide 16. That's fine. Four. Is it okay? Yes. Uh, yeah, slide 16. I think here then, Chair, the CFO was talking about the reductions that have been made on the business event side. Uh, the key thing there as well, in terms of moving from 140 million uh, right down to 23 million. I mean, this sector, the business event sector, was the one that was hardest hit in terms of the front end. This is the conferencing, the MICE meetings, um, incentives, conferencing, and the exhibition side of the business there. That business has really slowed down essentially because of the global environment that is not, uh, you know, accelerating on the meeting side. Next slide. Then essentially, this then gives the detail of the 170 million rand deduction. We are no longer doing market access programs, whether it be, um, you know, in Daba as an example that has been cancelled, or meetings Africa for next year, and any other global events would have done, you know, in terms of uh, the other platforms. And the cancellations of those then just accumulate in terms of some of the costs that we're able to save, because right now it's just not the time to be able to go with these. Next slide. Then our last program, which is program five, really deals with the tourist experience side. This is the quality assurance side of the business uh, that looks at the Vista experience or customer service, as it were. Again, similarly here, a uh, reduction from 72 million to 44, and the delta there being 28 million. The next slide gives the details of the 28 million, Paul. Uh, I think the big ones there are on the welcome initiatives. These are activities that we typically roll out at land borders and airports as well, as tourists comes in, in terms of making sure that the entire value chain end to end when the tourist arrives in the country is covered. But of course, when there are no tourists coming through, there is no activities in terms of making sure that, uh, you know, um, that the welcome initiatives are actually rolled out. Similarly, A access, trade tools, and uh, hosting programs have all come to a halt. Whereas I said in the APP, we are now looking inwardly, focusing within SA Tourism, rebuilding ourselves so that, you know, when the time is right, we're able to reignite all of these tools uh, again going forward there. I think that is the details of the different five programs. Um, significantly, it just shows that uh, from what we had planned, we have made some major adjustments where we have literally uh, reduced external exposure because there is not much, at the least there isn't much activity happening in the market. Again, as I said earlier on, when the time is right, as we are evaluating it closely, we will be able to go back and essentially look for uh, funding that allows us then to be able to um, do the necessary marketing or external work uh, from that perspective there. I hope I've done a good job of the CFO's uh, presentation, but I think let me hold it there and uh, thank you, Chair, and then uh, we can take questions from myself, CFO, and the team. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, CEO. You, you did very well. That's why you are the CEO. You are always uh, vigilant and ready to take over any time. Honorable members, uh, that is the presentation. And just to remind honorable members that um, we did receive uh, a recovery strategy from the SA Tourism Board in the context of what the department had presented to say. Based on the coronavirus, we have developed a recovery strategy, which is based on some of the decisions also that are taken at the command council level. But also, as the minister said, it's based on projections which are based on scenario and risk planning, including mitigation of those scenarios. And the minister did say in SA Tourism, we will continue to monitor the environment locally, continentally and global. And as and when conditions change, accordingly, both the SA Tourism and the department will continue to take the portfolio committee on board. 
So thanks for the presentation. And uh, we are now going to be engaging. We'll start with Honorable Mbong. Chair, Chairperson, Bye. apologies to come in. Can I request, I forgot to indicate, I did indicate to you, I think, yesterday. Can I request to be excused back to NCCC um, and the Portfolio Committee proceed? Uh, both the board, boards, um, DGDM and others are here. If I can go back to the NCCC, I'd request that you to go back um, there. If it's acceptable. The powers in the of the portfolio committee, you are released. The minister will remain with the deputy minister of the team. Summarizing. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I really appreciate it. Bye, thank you. Over to you, Honorable Krambok. The Honorable Krambok. Honorable Krambok, are you around? Okay, we will come. Yes, to Chair. Um, yeah, I, I am around. I'm just coming off mute. Um, I'm, okay, I'm Honorable Krambok. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to talk. Yeah, I, I am here. I'm, I'm happy to let uh, Honorable Zafratis and Gumbi go first, please, Chair. Okay, our next speaker, Honorable Krambog, will be Honorable Kalipa. Honorable Kalipa? Okay. The next speaker is Honorable Galo. That's a girl. Our next speaker is Honorable Defreitas. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just want to just thank you very much to the CEO for the presentation. Um, I just wanted to inquire um, with the changes in uh, in the reduction in, in budget and so forth, I would presume there'd be a repurposing of um, of staff. Uh, they would presumably be have to possibly their, 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 their functions and might have to change because of the reduction. Um, if that is the, the case, if you could just give us Obviously, you can't give us the detail now, but just broad brush strokes as what uh, SAT would envision uh, with staff and so forth, that they're still used optimally. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Defreitas. Ndate Abre. Thank you, Chairperson and uh, Minister and uh, to the Department. I want to say that I thank you for the for the presentation that was given out. I think uh, it is absolutely uh, welcoming under the current conditions. Um, I must also say to the minister that uh, we should let no amount of pressure by any wise or any force or any uh, agent come to put pressure on, on yourself to bring a different view from from that which the NCCC and therefore then our government would have agreed to. We are together in this, and when we say together, we mean it literally. So, um, so mine is just to to to, to uh, acknowledge the, the receipt of the receipt of this presentation, and I don't have major questions on that country. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honourable uh, April. Honourable Krampok, over to you now. Sorry, was that my name, Chair? Yes, Honorable Krambok, over to you. Yeah, thank, thanks so much. Um, Chair, um, on the President's address the other night on national television, he, he pointed out quite correctly that um, different provinces would um, reach their peaks and then start to decline in infections at different times, maybe some as early as late July and others only in September. Um, are we in a position to know yet if that is indeed the case? The, the budget as, as it's now structured, is there some thinking that it might be possible to market some places in the country before others as a sort of interim, um, you know, inter interim step before our country as a whole, which is right through the, the crisis, 
in all nine provinces would be done? Or is it going to be, we all start at the same time? Does the budget take into account that there may be opportunities where we've overcome the worst of the, of, of the pandemic and we can safely attract tourists to certain places when they are ready? Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Krambok. Our next uh, speaker is Honorable Gumba. Thank you very much, sir. I had to drive to the I'll place where I can find some signal. Uh, chair, uh, I want to thank the department for their comprehensive presentation. However, I have a question that is regarding to the staff reduction, where it's talking about freezing of posts. Um, possibly it's not a reduction, but freezing of posts. My question is, uh, is the organogram of the department not going to be affected? Uh, because once you freeze the post, it means you are freezing the post which are reflecting on the organogram. And there are reasons why those posts are in the organogram. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is that not going to affect the effectiveness running uh, of the department? Because if you have done, you don't have relevant people in the department, uh, and you find that those posts are part of those ones which are, are set aside, won't it be a, it won't it have an impact in terms of delivery, or maybe uh, achieving your deliverable, deliverables as planned? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Honorable Gomba. It is not the department; it is the entity. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's just a, a slight uh, correction there. Okay. Baba Stok. Yeah, I'm going to go on. Ah, this is a second name, Kavi. No, I'm cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chairperson. First of all, we want to thank and um, appreciate the presentation from the South African tourism. Actually, it is an eye opener and it gives us some, 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 some understanding of what is happening in the, in the, in the industry. But the only two questions, one question that I want to, to, to try and get it is that the, we understand the frustration that the entity have now. But what I, I am trying to check from their staff uh, perspective, is there any staff that is going to affect it when they are doing this restructuring uh, plan? If if they are, how many are they going to to affect it? If 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 not, it is it will be the it will it will good for 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 them. And then I think that I want to try to get do they have any strategy strategy prioritized strategy market that they are using now to to actually market the, 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 the tourism in, 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 in locally, domestically, because it, it, international is, is another issue, but domestically, after this the discussion that they have done. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Honorable Gumbi. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. Um, you, you're right, Chairperson, that um, we have been presented with the recovery plan. Um, and uh, I think it was Honorable April who was making some remarks, for instance, about uh, 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 supports for the Minister and the National Coronavirus um, Task Force. And it's quite very, it's, it's, and, and I made these remarks, I think, at the last portfolio committee, where it's quite difficult to really look at the plans, for instance, of an entity and its budget and where it wants to go and isolate it away from and isolated away from the politics and necessarily what is going on with the with the pandemic naturally. And so and so under 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 the circumstances, um, um, it is a, a, a well presented um, budget. And, you know, there are some constraints that are there. But at the end of the day, um, Minister Mkise's, Health Minister Mkise's uh, uh, reply to his parliamentary questions 
about the amount of preparedness, medical preparedness around the country is something that is actually should be shocking for us and worrying for us, I think, in the tourism industry. Because in essence, it says that locked down, we really, really put under pressure, especially under tourism. We put under pressure a lot of jobs and a lot of businesses. So a lot of people who are along the entire value chain are out of jobs. And we still haven't prepared enough necessarily for, 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 for those peaks that Honorable Krumbach was talking about. So, so what that means is that you're preparing a budget then, not knowing whether are you opening up in December or you're not. Are you opening up next year or you're not? And I think that, and I think that everything has shown that there is such a deep lack of capacity in the state to actually get things um, done and a lack of political will and inconsistencies that the likelihood is that even with this so-called enhanced lockdown, um, we're not going to we're not going to be developing significant capacity to deal with the health crisis. So you've got a health crisis, and then you've got a serious jobs crisis. I mean, if we just look at just the 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 the, the wine making industry, uh, we can we can we can talk about it as if it's like alcohol, and you know we talk of all those problems. But you know the value chain, even from tourism and stuff, that is seriously significant. From bottle store owners, the the, the the wine sellers, from restaurants to to all those people who work within the agricultural sector, is so serious, Chair, that I think that at some point in time, as the tourism portfolio committee, we have to actually have a real look at a real look at the decisions of even uh, of the government in itself, in the sense that we can't. The minister is unable to divorce or detach herself of course, from those decisions, but unfortunately, she's going to be held liable. So the best that I can say more than anything is that it's a comment. Um, I think that I'm covered well by Honorable De Freitas and Honorable Krumbach is that um, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you can't divorce um, the politics uh, of actually what is happening and the, and the political leadership in the managing of this actual crisis with um, the kind of budget that's going to be taken. Because the budget is going to be there, but tomorrow, it may be irrelevant, actually, in the context of everything that's going on. Thank you, Chair. Sure. Uh, Honorable uh, Krego. Honorable T.S. Krego. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Am I audible? Very audible. What has happened to my gadget? Just proceed. We can hear you. You can hear me. Yeah, you can hear me. Let me just appreciate the, the presentation. Uh, we appreciate the fact that uh, the department uh, with its entity are never found wanting. They are always ready, as ready as uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Guides. I notice what the CEO has just done when the finance guru uh, disconnected, he was ready to take over. Chairperson, uh, I also appreciate the commitment displayed by the National Command Council in saving lives and giving direction to the people of South Africa, given the high level of infection. Uh, I had an, a question, Chair, which I think it has been addressed by the Minister in her opening remarks in the issue of a strategy towards domestic tourism. I wanted to ask a question that says, with, are they going to employ the same strategy that was there before COVID-19? But her presentation in saying they have adopted a risk-adjusted strategy, covered me, uh, Given the fact that, Chairperson, they have, as SAT, they have been given an extra responsibility of managing and implementing the Tourism Relief Fund, which I think at the right time, they will be able to give us feedback. We don't need it now, when they are ready, when time comes, they must be able to give us a, a feedback. My question is around the, the postponed uh, bookings and meetings. 
in their presentation, they mentioned the Indaba. I wanted to ask if that does not have implications on the revised budget. Uh, also, Chair, let's uh, put up a plea to the minister to say she must continue in engaging the National Treasury in lobbying resources for extra funds as an intervention to the lost jobs and business closure, Chairperson. I think let me also welcome the finished assignment of closing gaps in the board of SAT, which resulted in them having a chairperson and a deputy chairperson. We welcome that. I also welcome those that are new to the board. Thank you very much, chairperson. Those were my concerns and questions. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Honorable Kweko. Honorable Makubela, Mashe. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Let me also uh, follow or echo on the words of my colleague who have just present, uh, recently uh, uh, spoken, uh, Honorable Kreko, to welcome the appointment of the Chairperson and the Deputy Chairperson of the Board and the new members uh, in the South African Tourism Board. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I only have uh, questions around uh, the, the, the revised budget based on, we, we understand that SAT uh, gets uh, resources from money that is appropriated from uh, National Treasury, but there are also revenues which uh, SAT was receiving from the sector, meaning uh, the Tomsa levies, the monies that they generated from Meetings Africa and uh, the tourism in Daba uh, as products that belonged that belongs to the entity. Now, this, in a sense, that uh, uh, businesses in tourism are not open for leisure, they would not be able to uh, be able to get the tourism or the Tomsa levies, they're not able to collect. Uh, the Indaba has not happened, they were not able to generate those resources. Now, I, I missed the quantification of this, um, of this adjusted in the adjustment in the, in the revised uh, adjustment uh, uh, budget of, 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 of SAT to say what is the impact, what would be the impact of uh, these revenue streams that would not be coming forth? And what is the quantity of these revenue streams? And moving forward, what is the plan to ensure that uh, as we move to a post-COVID uh, era, what would tourism do or what would the entity do to ensure that it um, encourages uh, businesses in, in, in this sector to continue to uh, be giving the revenues of the Tomsa levies and those that are also selling the products through uh, the platforms that they provide to, to be able to do so. And Chair, is, the last comment is just to appreciate that we understand the current situation of the tourism sector. We are all in this uh, together and we feel and, uh, the pain that the tourism sector is currently at, but that has to be coupled with responsibility from the sector to say, let's measure the, 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 the lives that, ne that needs to be spared together with uh, perhaps the the profits that or, or opening up of businesses. We understand that whatever government is doing, it is done through the risk adjustment uh, strategies that government is, is currently implementing. And ours is to plead with the sector to understand uh, the situation that we are all in, a chairperson, and I land here. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Makubela. And, and thanks for the presentation again by the SA team. Once more, we want to echo what committee members have said, to welcome both the chair and the Dube. And the committee. Oh, you are then the Dube? Yes, I'm here, Chair. Oh, I saw in the messages that you, you are struggling to, to come in. So you, you can speak. I, okay, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Sorry. Yes, uh, although I lost most part of the presentation, I just have some few bites to, to, to take. Chairperson, I, I, I want to welcome the, the announcement of the president, although it is late, he has been told a long time ago, of banning the, the alcohol again. But I know the alcohol uh, banning will affect, will then affect the rest, opening of the restaurant. And that is putting the SAT and, and, and the tourism industry again in, in, tra in, in trouble. But although it is very, it, it, it is relevant because Chairperson, if the president is saying we, we must avoid visiting people at their homes, what, what then when we, we meet at the restaurants? So let's accept that the pandemic has arrived and then we, we must just uh, uh, comp compromise many things. My question, Chairperson, is on the issue of jobs. How many jobs will be affected by this uh, revised budget? And then how many uh, projects of the of the villages, townships, and, and small dormitories will be affected. Lastly, I want I, 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 I want to check if the SAT have prioritized local tourism since the international uh, tourism is not operating uh, at all. Have they prioritized local tourism? And then, what changes are we going to see to show that the whole uh, uh, focus is now? on local tourism, because nothing is happening at, 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 at the international level. Chairperson, I'll, I'll pause here because I, I lost most part of the presentation. Okay. Due to the network thing. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Honorable Moteka. And sorry, because I got a message here that uh, you were struggling to come in. So I thought you were not able to come through. Um, I was you, saying, Chair. Honorable Members, that uh, we want to thank both the department and the South African Tourism Board for having been able to adjust the plans and the budget accordingly. But that does not mean, and this is very important, that does not mean that aspects of the budgets that have either been suspended or have been put aside are no longer important components for the activities of enhancing, growing, and sustaining tourism in South Africa. So I will suggest to the board and the department that from a communications perspective, we continue to communicate a message that says the aspects in the budget that have been compromised as a consequence of the inevitabilities of COVID-19 does not make those aspects unimportant or irrelevant. It is just that because of conditions under which we find ourselves under, we had to make this tough but necessary choices. So from a communications point of view, I will suggest that uh, we continue to do that. The second point, just also from a communications point of view, this thing about alcohol, we need to continue to educate our society that government is not opposed to people engaging in entrepreneurship of alcohol. There are some restaurant owners who feel that opening up a restaurant without uh, it being accompanied by access to alcohol 
is, is as much as not opening. So I think we need to send a message to the restaurant owners that we need to use the opportunity we have at our disposal and that the choices that are made are not out of government, not wanting restaurant owners, hotel owners to have an income to be able to cover their costs, to grow their businesses, to create jobs and so on. But that that's the option that was at the disposal of government to make sure that uh, we reduce the risk in as far as a uh, human behavior affected by alcohol is concerned. So it's not really about who owns and controls the alcohol uh, in the industry. It's more about how it is. So I think it will be a result I want to make from my side is to say to SAT there are people all over the world who are very rich, who are well off, who are wealthy. Is there a possibility that we can make a proposal to the command council and say now in the medium term and in the long term we want to demonstrate to the world the capacity of South Africa in as far as hosting those who choose to come and get med medical treatment in South Africa is concerned. If you are in Britain or Brazil or Australia and you want to come for medical treatment in as far as corona is concerned or in as far as any other ailment is concerned and the best treatment you can get is in South Africa, that's medical health tourism. Therefore, make a proposal that says we will make sure that we adhere to all the protocols that are laid upon by the command cancer. If we allow these people who have got money all over the world and they want to come and get medical treatment in South Africa, if they are quarantined, they want to go into a game reserve, quarantine in there, all the protocols are followed, revenue is coming in, but at the same time, South Africa is offering them treatment from a health perspective, medical perspective. At the same time, we are marketing South Africa through quality provision of medical care. So we can do that for uh, people who come from overseas, but we can also do that for South Africans who can afford, and Africans who can afford. So it's international, it's overseas, it's Africa, and then it's local. I know it's not in your presentation, but I'm just making a proposal that throw it on the table of the command council and say, why don't we provide that opportunity? Because there are people overseas, for instance, who can fly themselves. And therefore, at an international level, when you engage with who and other countries, this can be thrown onto the table and say, we think this can provide some space for those who want to fly into South Africa privately or otherwise to come for treatment. What does this mean? It means beyond Corona, South Africa will have, will have marketed itself as a country capable of treating different ailments. And those who have come here for treatment will at the same time help us with the marketing because the feedback that will be coming from them will be indicating the extent to which we can take care of them the extent to which during their treatment they were able to go into game reserves and um, enjoy the wildlife uh, in South Africa. So I just wanted to make uh, uh, that proposal. The, I also want to suggest SAT that working together with the department, it's quite clear that uh, we will have to introduce a degree of predictability and certainty around communication. It will be important for you, for instance, to say every fortnight on such and such a date, such and such a time, over and above what the Command Council is saying, there will be communication coming from both the department and SAT so that those who are involved in the tourism sector can then know that on a particular date time, we are going to be receiving communication. 
from the department. It helps them with planning, but it also strengthens the understanding in as far as uh, the dynamics of what we deal with within the tourism uh, sector is concerned. Linked to that, which is my last uh, proposal, suggests that we must have some kind of a, a line that we must popularize where people can on an ongoing basis send proposals on how they think we can deal with some of the aspects of the economy that are tourism uh, related. Those ideas that we will be uh, getting as a department, as SAT, on a regular basis, maybe fortnight or monthly, as we communicate back to our masses, you can then be able to demonstrate the extent to which some of the proposals they've made are featuring in your discussions between yourselves and TBCSA, Tourism Business Council of uh, South Africa, as a body that is representing the private sector, the voice of the private sector in the broader context of uh, tourism. Otherwise, Ntade Dube, we welcome you, the chair. Mema uh, Mujanku Gumbi, we are also welcoming you. We also have a Gumbi in the committee, Mema uh, Mujanku Gumbi. Uh, so people must know that uh, there's no relationship between the Gumbi we have here in the committee and uh, the deputy chair of the South African Tourism Board. The rest of the members, you are also welcome. As a committee, in summary, we work on reciprocation, effective reciprocation between the executive arm of the state and the legislative arm of the state. In summary, we welcome you. We'll work with you going forward to overcome the challenges that we are facing. Deputy Minister, uh, Honorable Mashalela, I'm sure you are there. You will then command your forces together with the chair on dealing with issues that have been raised by the committee, and then we have a way forward to deal with the minutes and close the meeting. No, that, thank you very much, Chair, and thank members for for a comment and questions that they've raised. We'll, we'll ask the CEO to indicate who will be dealing with what, and then after that, the chair of the board will then also make comment. How about you, CEO? Thank you, DM, and uh, thank you again, honorable members. Um, three members of my team got uh, load shared exactly the same time including myself. So we fell off and then it to come back in again. So uh, please excuse our tardiness. Sometimes they've missed some of the questions there. I am now going to ask um, the, the ex-co members, starting with the chief operations officer and then the chief uh, marketing officer and then uh, the chief conventions bureau to uh, follow through and ask some questions there, answer some of the questions and then we'll pick up any others that are outstanding. So over to you, Steph. Thank you, CEO, and uh, uh, good afternoon, honorable members and honorable chairperson. I will deal with uh, the question regarding um, the repurposing of staff. I think it's important for me to just uh, 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 give background that <clears throat> as, as an entity, the, there is, there has been discussions around uh, the re-looking re and the repurposing of South African tourism, uh, you know, as an entity, um, even before um, COVID or before uh, the pandemic uh, hit uh, the country or the globe. One of the things that uh, we had uh, started focusing on, um, you know, during this COVID period was to look at what are some of the things that we've got to do as an entity which uh, enables us to be efficient. So looking at our internal um, uh, environment. Uh, so we've highlighted or we've identified a couple of projects that we've got to do to enable us to have a, 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 a policy environment that is uh, aligned to that of, of government and clean the, up our policy environment, basically. The second thing that we've looked at is uh, how we strengthen our, um, obviously, our internal control environment to ensure that we look at all the things and other things that probably might have been picked up during previous audits so that we, 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 we can handle that and close that uh, during this period. The other area that we've looked at is uh, how we 
obviously to create operational efficiency, how we digitize our, you know, our environment, and which is a project, um, you know, that we're doing. But over and above that, uh, honorable chair and members, as we've looked at, uh, obviously having looked at the recovery plan and what it, uh, you know, and, and what it recommends, we had uh, already started looking at what are some of the things that we've got to do as an entity to ensure that we're ready, um, you know, when the sector opens. Uh, we've identified a couple of projects which were running uh, via the enterprise project management. And these are the projects that would enable South African tourism as an entity to be ready, uh, you know, to go to market, um, you know, as soon as the sector is open. Some of these projects uh, relate to um, how we contribute towards uh, obviously transforming the sector. Uh, that's one. But secondly, um, uh, looking at how do we ensure that we create market access for the new entrants uh, uh, into the tourism sector. So some of these projects are, you know, enterprise and supplier development uh, project, which we are doing internally, which doesn't necessarily require us, uh, you know, to fund. Um, hence, it's not part of, uh, you know, part of the APP and part of the adjusted, uh, you know, budget. The second area that we're looking uh, at, which would enable us to be ready for, you know, for when the sector opens, is that of attractions and experiences. We've been, um, you know, engaging the sector, and one of the things uh, uh, that comes up, particularly with, um, you know, the trade that assists us as part of the channel internationally, is that a South African, uh, South African as a destination, where they're looking for new attractions and new experiences that they can begin to package and sell to uh, their clients. So as an entity, we've now organized ourselves, we've set up a project to start looking at how do we create a database of new experiences and attractions that might have been obviously existing previously, but have not uh, been given, uh, you know, market access. And this also obviously touches um, uh, on, on the question around what are we doing in terms of looking at the villages, um, uh, you know, uh, townships and small dorpies. And those, uh, and that project is to enable us to understand what is out there, what exists out there, and uh, ensure that we obviously quality assure them uh, at the end of the day. The other part that we are doing uh, to ensure that we are ready for, for when the sector is, is open is around creating that platform, a digital platform, uh, which we call a technology hub, to ensure that we give market access, particularly to small businesses and new entrants in, uh, into the market. This is one of the projects that would be delivered against um, you know, the APP. Uh, so, so coming back to the question which says, what are staff doing at this particular moment? Because of uh, the fact that we couldn't do a lot of, uh, you know, front-facing marketing work, particularly in uh, in our international space, we had to obviously look at all of these things and repurpose, or not repurpose, but allocate staff members to actually drive particular projects uh, to ensure that by the time the sector is open, all of these things, um, you know, are, 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 have been delivered. So from a question of do, are we going to lose jobs? Currently, we have not restructured the organization. Yes, there is a, a, a bigger project around looking at the institutional architecture and, 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 the, and, and NSA tourism uh, as an entity, looking at possible measures uh, uh, with other you know, entities of government. However, at this point in time, we have not uh, done any, any, any uh, restructuring. Uh, the question, there was a question from Honorable Goomba, uh, Goomba as, um, around would around the staff freeze or post freeze and whether or not this is not going to affect um, you know the running or the effective running of, of the of the entity what we've done as the executive team is to look at uh, uh, you know um, uh, the, those critical vacancies that exist in the business and what we've done is we've put uh, uh, in place a, a, a you know a business case which we've submitted to the board uh, uh, highlighting the areas which we think we need uh, to fill, uh, you know, these vacancies as soon as possible. However, in, on an interim uh, solution, given the fact that we just don't know where we're going to end up, uh, you know, from a, an entity point of view. So from an effective running of, of our business, we did, uh, you know, identify these, uh, you know, um, vacancies and we're in the position of filling them uh, in, a, in a, you know, from a short term, um, uh, you know, uh, short term point of view to ensure that we don't obviously drop any balls and we, we remain as effective um, uh, as possible. Um, I think uh, those are the, quest the, the questions that uh, relate to uh, what are we doing to ensure that the staff are engaged at the moment and uh, uh, whether or not we're going to 
uh, be affected uh, in terms of the uh, uh, you know revised budget when it comes to issues around staff. I'll, I'll end it there unless there's anything. Thank you, Ste. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, let me hand over to TK, the Chief Marketing Officer. If you can just be brief as well. Good afternoon, um, Chairperson, Honourable Members. Uh, um, I'm going to respond to the question pertaining to uh, domestic um, uh, tourism. The CMO's forum, Chief Marketing uh, Officers Forum, is a forum where all the Chief Marketing Officers of the provincial tourism authorities get together with South African tourism to ensure that our marketing is all aligned and that we work collaboratively in order to deliver a singular platform of marketing uh, uh, to the world and domestically. Uh, this forum has been uh, meeting uh, quite regularly and uh, most frequently now within this COVID uh, window, we have met on the 25th of June, on the 9th of July, we met again on the 13th and we're having our final meeting next week, Monday on the 20th, to consolidate our marketing effort. There are five work streams in which we are, are, are collaborating. The first one is aligning our strategies. Uh, the second one is aligning our content and our messaging. And I want to pause here to give the committee comfort that the content that we're pulling together comes from the ground, from the villages, towns, and small dopies, which the provincial authorities have got um, very detailed insight uh, into, in terms of what product opportunities are there, what attractions are still there, and how to drive the domestic and local tourism especially within this window that we're in, and also making sure that as business travel begins to open up and maybe uh, later on um, as um, uh, leisure tourism begins to open up, that we actually have all the content and the messaging to be able to meet those opportunities as they open up. So that is the next stream. The third work stream is around digital collaboration to make sure that all our websites and all our digital platforms are communicating a consistent message, message and that we're aggregating all of the traffic and the input that we're getting from our users uh, in order to sharpen our targeting and our messaging. Uh, the fourth work stream is around consolidating our event calendar. Uh, as uh, has been said, as the sector begins to open up, eventing will become one of the biggest drivers uh, in order to see a resurgence in local, domestic, and then eventually international travel. So that, that consolidated calendar uh, has been put together. And then finally is the alignment of all our campaigns. So those are the five work streams that we have. And I'd like to assure uh, this committee uh, that every single province is on board in terms of the consolidated plan um, and um, that it, the funding also of this particular pro, uh, pro program has been aggregated to make sure that we do not duplicate what we're doing and that we're very efficient in terms of how we deploy um, the investments on marketing. The second question that I want to just respond to was all around the crowdsourcing of ideas. Uh, we launched a hashtag uh, a, a month ago called Share South Africa, where we have invited all South Africans to contribute their stories about what is happening in their localities in order for us to know what attractions uh, are available at a local level. And that contribution has been very rich. Uh, we've got great stories across our country uh, in places that are not, you know, normally on the radar for tourism. We have harvested all of that so that we can make sure that as the sector opens up, traffic is directed to those attractions that are on the ground that are being highlighted by users. So that is my response on this. Our domestic focus, our local marketing focus is there. And as the sector opens up, we will have the material to be able to market. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, TK. And then uh, lastly, uh, Amanda from a Convention Bureau perspective. Um, thank you so much, CEO. Um, Honourable um, Deputy Minister, good afternoon uh, also to the chairperson and all the members. Um, yes, I, I think, you know, it's a two it's a two sides to the coin of, you know, um, so on the one side, we sa we saved, if we can call it saving, um, some money by not, you know, with uh, Meetings Africa, um, we had Meetings Africa, but in Darwin not, and also six platforms um, or trade exhibitions that we couldn't participate in, um, you know, to the likes of ITB and IMEX, you know, two IMEXs and, 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 and that is, um, it has a saving of around about 50 million plus. Um, but what we are doing in the meantime, because I think also Honorable Makobela asked, you know, but what do we, how do we see it moving forward? And we are busy. Um, I think uh, the coup and the CEO touch on it, you know, in the recovery on what we are doing to make up, make sure that we are market ready and that we are ready when, you know, when the floodgates open, that we are there. Um, you know, there are two trade shows that we're not sure of if they will still continue. What we will do there, if it if it does continue, is to make sure that there are our country officers will then participate, you know, on behalf of South Africa, so that it's not out of sight, out of mind. Um, so there are different uh, um, uh, projects that we are looking at in reviewing uh, in DABA and the Meetings Africa and platforms on how we will how we will participate and how we will actually put these platforms forward with all the advanced um, technology um, that that we learned now. Um, if it wasn't if it's not load shedding, um, but that we learned of you know to um, to 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 use it as a positive for us um, rather than a negative. And then just the last thing about the meetings. Um, some of the meetings still took place, but they were virtual meetings. What we then did is to work with our CMO and have an opening, you know, um, from one of our people or have a, at least a, um, a video with, a, you know, a link, um, emotional, you know, a call for people to remember um, us as a country and that we are here and that we are still awaiting, you know, for, um, for our people to come back to South Africa. Thank you so much, CEO. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can yes, you hear me? you greeted us earlier. Okay, yes. I was trying to see whether you can still hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. We are waiting for ah. your collective to okay, no, thanks. Uh, to wrap up the responses. Yes. F firstly, Chair, let me uh, thank uh, the members of the committee for the warm welcome and the uh, support that has been expressed. Uh, let me also uh, take note uh, of the chair's uh, wise weight and the advice is in terms of how we can improve on communication. And we're certainly going to take that forward. Uh, perhaps there are a few questions that uh, uh, I need to respond to or support the team that has responded so that we can be as comprehensive as, 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 as possible. Uh, firstly, on, on, there, were, there were a number of questions from the members on the issues around the staff and the freezing of costs and so on and so forth. And the COO has responded to the questions, but maybe from a context perspective, members will recall that uh, on the 26th of February, the Minister of Finance announced that a uh, government will accelerate the consolidation of the public entities. That point was further emphasized in the supplementary budget. So this is as a result of that, that it then does not make sense for the entity SAT to go on recruiting drive when we are not sure what is going to be the final outcome of that process. And uh, uh, the budget that we presented today does not affect the staffing. The, the cuts are mainly from but the reprioritization is mainly from the goods and services in the main. So I just wanted to give that context so that uh, it does not uh, uh, lose that, that, that origin of where it came from. 
secondly, uh, there was a question from uh, 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 Honorable Member Makubele uh, on the other revenue streams that SAT has lost in terms of what is the quantum of the amounts. I'm, I'm responding to this because uh, the CFO has uh, uh, actually been low chaired, so maybe she won't be able to, to respond. So from the Thompson Levy, uh, we are looking at 144 million that we have said we are not going to be able to receive because uh, currently there is no tourism activity uh, and, and the establishments that are, call, are collecting that levy uh, are not operating to be able to. So, so it does make sense to then uh, budget for it to say we still receive it. Uh, of course, as soon as the, the, the sector reopens again, there will be campaigns uh, to try and, and, and extend that uh, revenue uh, uh, levy collection as wide as possible, because currently not everyone participates in that process. Uh, it's one of the programs that we are looking at as we are focused internally to see what are the things that we could be doing better. The other amount was uh, with regard to the events, it's 112 million. Uh, that again, because of the events that we have postponed or cancelled, uh, we, we are not going to be able to generate that revenue. So I wanted to provide that 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 that, that perspective there. There was a, a comment, a request from a, a honourable member Krejo on the management of the tourism relief fund, uh, just to indicate that. Uh, 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 as, as, as the process is about to be finalized together with the department, uh, we will come back to brief the, the committee uh, 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 on, 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 on the impact and, and, and of the TRF and how far it has gone. Uh, there was a comment uh, from uh, uh, the according to member Fritas on the functions that has to change to use to be uh, so that SAT is uh, opt or functions optimally. Uh, in terms of that process, as we are looking in terms of our internal processes, uh, part of that work is to identify areas that uh, we could improve on. Just to highlight that uh, part of the opportunity that the COVID crisis present is for SAT to really look at its processes, to really look at the way that it does things. There could be a lot of savings that could be achieved. For an example, currently, even though we are not marketing actively as, 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 as we, we, we used to do before COVID, there is still some limited marketing activities, which is below the line, which costs far less than currently than the traditional methods. So it's part of all that processes that we then are going to be working on to say, what are the things that we could do better and, 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 and going forward so that, because we understand the environment that we operate in, it's a constrained environment from the fiscal perspective, and therefore we need to also come to the party if there are better ways of doing things to be able to do so if we are saving costs for the fiscal. Uh, there is an apology from some of our members. Uh, we are not shaded, so some of the board members may have left as we are talking here. Uh, I want to apologize for them. And then, uh, Chair, I uh, humble request that at least the committee gets to hear the voice of the Deputy Chair. Uh, she would like to also say something to the committee as, as I thank the committee and conclude. Thank you. Memo Jan Gugumbi. I just wanted to thank you very much for what welcoming me so warmly to the committee and to thank the honorable members for welcoming me to the committee and hope that we will work together very well as as we we proceed the only thing i wanted to say from this meeting is that i suppose like the rest of the world our calculations of the budget are based on the best available information um, where we are trying to deal chairperson with a vicious pandemic that has got the whole world in a very difficult position so uh, we do our best and we hope that the committee would understand that we do our best that's why we call it a risk adjusted 
strategy because you have to keep checking every time. Uh, it's a moving target. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, that, that's all I wanted to say. We, it's really not because we don't want to be completely open. I mean, there's total transparency, but it's a, it's a totally moving target. But thank you very much for the warm welcome. Hello, Deputy Chair. Thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. And we look forward to your very constructive contributions to the work of the SA Tourism Board with the wealth of experience that you bring. Your advantage is that at some point you're also on the executive side of the state. So I'm sure that will come in handy for the, the, the board. So we will welcome you. Uh, Chairperson, once more, we welcome you and the rest of the members. So we, we welcome you. Just in, in conclusion, we want to appreciate the presentation done by the committee. We also want to appreciate the transparency, the openness of the committee. We are going now to give the Deputy Minister, the Honorable Fish Mashalela, to make the closing remarks. No, no, th thanks, thanks very much, Chair, um, uh, for the opportunity, and to also thank all members, as I've indicated, for the contribution and the question that they've raised. Just to deal with one or two issues uh, that members have raised. One is the issue around opening uh, certain provinces. Uh, for tourism purposes. We must understand all of us that we are a unitary state. And therefore, being a unitary state, our approach and the products that we are selling are integrated in nature. And we don't have boundaries in a sense that it can be managed and be policed to say, no, this is a boundary for Northwest, this is a boundary for Western Cape. We don't have such in, in terms of making sure that we, 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 we monitor that. So the, the issue, therefore, of certain provinces being allowed to open and others not, it, it, it can't arise because we are a unitary state and our approach is a, it's, it's an integrated approach. And then when we sell products, we, we, we sell the country. We don't sell a individual provinces. And therefore, the approach a, should be unitary in nature. And then the, 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 the second issue is the issue that we have raised here around medical a, a, a health or health tourism. Uh, the, the challenge that you have is that the WHO is firstly emphasizing on a point that uh, that should not be encouraged uh, because of the challenge of the of the pandemic. But secondly, we as a country, as you know, we don't have sufficient beds, uh, and therefore, if you allow other people to come into the country you will have a crisis. That's why one of the reasons, for example, why liquor is it's, it's, it's closed is because people with trauma as a result of liquor and accident on the road are now increasing and taking the beds that is required to accommodate patients with the COVID-19. And therefore, we don't have sufficient beds as a country to be able to, to take that. But what we are also I don't know promoting. whether is the network on my side, Honorable Deputy Minister. Uh, I could hear you. If I'm it's not sure. so, sorry, Deputy Minister, if it's network problems on my side. Well, I could I could hear you, Chair. I'm not sure whether. Uh, uh, Chair, I think it's network on your. I, I think it's network on your side because we can hear the DM clearly. We can clearly hear the DM. I think perhaps it's network from your side. Okay, Oslo, see, proceed. No, 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 thanks very much. Uh, then, uh, so, so these, are, these are some of the challenges that we have. Uh, I would have thought that the 
well, the CEO, but some of the questions that you have raised, we might be able to follow up them in writing, like how many jobs uh, that uh, Honorable Mutete raised, how many jobs uh, will be affected by the cuts. Uh, we might not have the, the information because uh, it's not just affecting the jobs from the, from the SAT itself but the entire value chain system uh, that gets affected and therefore uh, the jobs then that gets affected as a result of that, not, not performing some of the work that was supposed to perform. Maybe it's a matter that we can, we can analyze it because we are continuously uh, analyzing because it's a moving target uh, in terms of the jobs that are, are being affected. And then the projects, uh, I'm sure Amanda has indicated some of the projects uh, that have been affected and that are going to be affected. The budget does indicate some of them, like in Dava uh, and Meetings Africa, etc. So all some of those projects have been affected uh, uh, by the by the cuts that we we've done because the activities are not going to take place uh, uh, currently until the situation normalizes. The, the approach, the recovery, the risk a strategy approach in terms of the recovery plan on domestic tourism, a, we are designing it in such a way that it should not be in the same old way. It should be informed by the new dynamics that arise as a result of post-COVID-19. And therefore, we can't be using the same strategy. A, uh, for domestic, even for, 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 for international tourists as well. Uh, we need to review it differently because the approach will not be the same at all. And then thank you very much, Chair, and thanks, members, uh, for, 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 for the input and the question that has been asked. And if there are issues that uh, we might have not responded properly, we are at liberty to 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 it for uh, members are at liberty to indicate so through the the committee secretary so that we are able therefore to 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 maybe respond in writing if there's something that might be missing. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you very much, Honourable Deputy Minister, for the wrapping up. As the committee, we are not insisting that uh, a special provision can be made for those who can afford to bring themselves to South Africa for medical treatment. Obviously, it will be based on risk. It will be based on our capacity to respond to such a need. It will also be based on our ongoing analysis. Lastly, it will be based on a country to country relationship and agreements in the broader context of what the World Health Organization uh, says. So we're just throwing that onto the table of the department uh, and the uh, SAT to look, at, uh, to look at so that we plant the seeds during the coronavirus and then the germination will start um, post the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. So we are not insisting at all. The, the way forward is that uh, from here, we will go and adopt the report as a committee. From the ensuing debates that have been there between the committee, the department, and the entity, it's quite clear that uh, we, are, we are not even far apart. There's about 99.9 .9 areas of convergence between what the committee says, what the department says, and what the SA Tourism says. So we want to thank the department for the Samberg, uh, Samberg relationship and SAT with the portfolio uh, committee. Those who could not be part of the meeting until to its conclusion, we apologize on your behalf because it was beyond your control. ESCOM, uh, there is all those challenges of Lucheri uh, and so on. But thanks for coming. The quality of the presentation, the manner in which you reinforce each other is both the department and, and SAT. 
And again, the frankness with which you raise some of the issues, admit the difficulties that are there, come up with solutions for all the difficulties that we have. So thank you very much, Deputy Minister, and your team. Give our regards to the Minister, Chairperson of the Board, Ndate Dube, and the rest of the members. Let's mention the Bakayesu, Lebu Higli, Bayer Thank you thank very you much, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Members of the portfolio committee, let's now deal with our minutes. The minutes were circulated to all of us by the administration. It is our assumption that all of us went through the minutes. Therefore, we are at the stage where we get a proposal for the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of what ensued in the last meeting of the portfolio committee. Chair, I propose the adoption of the minutes. Comrade Melina Gumba proposes. Is there a second? Chair, I would second the, 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 the Comrade Melina, although I was having an out of that meeting during to the signal, but I was there. I read it. Thank you very much, Honorable April. Members, do we have anyone objecting to the minutes as not representing a true reflection of what ensued in the last meeting? We don't have any objection. So the assumption is that uh, the minutes are a true reflection of what ensued in the last meeting. And uh, we will meet again in the next meeting where we'll be adopting the report of the committee. Good luck for tomorrow's sitting where we'll be dealing with the appropriation uh, budget. This is how we come to the end of the meeting. Honorable members, and thanks for your cooperation. God bless. Thank you. Hello, Chairman. Bye-bye, uh, everyone. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good morning. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>